So it took a little bit of looking for, but I found a furnace. I was looking for a two stage with low NOx. So I found a furnace that has low NOx in it. It's called NOx rods. Let's see what those look like inside the burner assembly. They all don't look alike. So here's a little preview of what they look like. look like inside the burner assembly they all don't look alike so here's a little preview of what they look like inside the burner chamber that is what a Knox rod looks like right there and that's what we're going to be pulling out Knox rods can look a little different but that's an example of a Knox rod so now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and set up to do our test. And this is a perfect example of what Knox rods will do. And just to kind of show you guys, I have a thermistor sitting right here. It's right here in this. So it's right about where the flame sensor is, the flame rollout. So that way we can see the temperature inside the burner compartment while this is running to see if we have CO spillage. You guys already watched that video on CO spillage and how it happens and how this is how we test for it. I just have it set up to my uh, meter over here so I can measure temperature. And I'll let you see that. So I just have it set up on my meter right here so that way we can measure temperature on that burner compartment right there to see if we have any CO spillage. And I made it so that way we can have the door on. All these tests have to be done as if it was in normal operation. Get this door off. First, we need to also drill our uh, hole for our combustion analyzer because this is a new system. Well, it's four years old, but it's never had a test done on it. And we're gonna go about 12 inches away from the inducer. All right, so we got our hole drilled. We're gonna get our combustion analyzer out, get everything set up. We'll have to take this door off. We can take this door off first. I already started pulling the screws out. So that way we can put our heating circuit jumped out. I've got it set up to where I can put this door back on and do my testing. Once again, these all tests have to be done under normal conditions. So we'll get our door back on. So I... All right, so I already got the door back on. I have my Jumper King set up to do this. I was just checking the ambient CO. I already started this up outside of the space. I have my hole drilled up in the flue for it. We're gonna go ahead and stick it in there and then start this up. We've already verified we have no CO up here. Hit the flue wall back off. Tighten this down. All right, let's see what she does on fire up. We need to change this to natural gas, atmospheric burner, and then we're going to fire her up. Burner compartment's at 91 degrees. Wait for this inducer to kick on. There we go. We have light off. We're gonna watch our CO. See how that CO, we're still within that minute range so we can't freak out just yet. Let's watch our O2 and our CO. So our O2 
O2's going up. It's been about a minute. Let's run a timer on this. See where it goes after a second minute. I didn't calibrate my uh, draft on here, so we're not going to go off of that just yet. We're just going to show what happens just by having those Knox rods in there. So we've already passed that one minute and we're at 31 parts per million, 7.3% on our O2. We're still in the safe range. Our stack temp's still kind of low on an induced draft furnace. We typically don't take our temperature for our stack temp until about minute three. Give it some time to run. Right now our burner temperature cabinet is 122 degrees. So we know we don't have CO spilling in there. Our O2 is 7.3, 7.4. We're about to hit that three minute mark. And we're at 304 on our stack temp, 34 parts per million on CO, 7.3 on O2. Still, as of right now, this is still burning correctly and fine. We're within that range of 6 to 9% on our O2. We're below 99 parts per million on our CO, and our stack temp is normal. We're within that range. So then we're gonna hit minute four, and that would probably really be minute five for this whole test. Our CO has been staying around 30 parts per million on average. We're at 32 right now, 34, 7.1% on our O2, 7% on our O2. Our O2 is still dropping. And our CO is starting to go up a little bit. Technically been running for about five minutes now, and we're at 6.7% on the O2, 7%, 37 parts per million. Our CO's kind of hanging around that area of 30 to 37. We're at 28 right now. So let's go ahead and shut this down, and we're gonna pull those NOx rods out and see what our CO is like without the NOx rods. All right, so I got those Knox rods out. <clears throat> I wound up having to disconnect the manifold, flame sensor, and the hot surface igniter to get it to go. And I, so I'll show you here what these Knox rods look like. This is what they look like. I just folded them, pulled them out of the burner compartment. So all three of them are out. Let's go ahead and put our door back on and see what our CO looks like. I'm gonna start the combustion analyzer back up. Uh, let's put this door back on. So our door is back on, combustion analyzer is calibrating. I'm gonna zero out my draft so that way it reads. All right. 
right. Zero probe. All right. Go to our graph. We're going to shove this back in. Let's see what it does without those Nox rods. All right, inducers on. light off and went out I wonder if I unplugged that flame sensor Let's see if we have any errors it's usually a flame sensor indicator right there Surf Snyder and lights. I need to reposition that flame sensor. Well, we can see if it's the flame sensor or if it's something else real quick. Shut her off real quick. And Check our flame sensor. It might just need to be repositioned. That flame sensor is pretty dirty. Let's clean it up real quick. That might be our problem. Let's see, we'll pull this off and we'll put a meter on it and see what it does. See if it reads correctly. I'll put this right here. It ran just fine last winter, so I highly doubt that. You didn't realize it because you have two furnaces on this house. I'm going to shove this in here. Make sure it lines up with that hole. Yeah, hold it like this, so that way it gets in the flame. I think I just created this problem. I just realized something. When I burn this, pull this burner assembly off, right there. That's a perfect example of how it's pretty easy to make a mistake when doing this stuff. None of us are perfect. It was probably just due to the fact that I didn't hook the ground back up. You gotta have a equipment ground for that flame sensor to work correctly I'm gonna go ahead and just test it anyways just to be sure so I'm gonna hook up some leads on there so as you can see since the other camera decided to die that our CO is higher without the NOx rods and our O2 is higher without the NOx rods and this is due to the fact that the Nox rods are cooling that flame down and you're actually creating less heat. And you notice our stack temp is higher. That's because 
we were cooling that flame down with those NOx rods. We were making this thing inefficient. Now we can add more gas to this and make this more efficient and we can actually add more gas based off of this because now our O2 is higher. Our CO is still within range. We're below 99 parts per million and those NOx rods were making it cooler. We would have had to add more gas, but then we would have ran out of O2 at that point in time. Now we can add more gas and make this thing burn more efficiently and burn better just from not having those NOx rods in. NOx rods are not necessary in the state of Arizona. They're a California compliance thing. I'm sure some other states have it, but here in Arizona, NOx rods are not a requirement. Low NOx actually makes a piece of equipment less efficient on burning and it takes more fuel to heat up the space because it has to run longer to get that temperature hotter, as you can see in here. So we're gonna turn this gas up and see what we do with it. So with just a quarter turn adjustment on the gas valve, it's been running like that for two minutes now. We're still burning safe. We've actually added some more heat into there. We cre increased the efficiency of this and our burner compartment is not spilling. As we can see, we're still well within range of that 120 to 140 degrees in our burner compartment. So we're not spilling CO into this furnace. And we were able to increase the gas just a quarter of a turn. We'd probably have to increase it more with those NOx rods. But this rate, now it's burning more efficiently. Just off of a few minutes of running without, I just increase it by a quarter of a turn and we're still within range. So, but you gotta make sure you get the permission of the customer before you do anything like that. I'm gonna let this run for a few more minutes, make sure the CO stays within range and make sure the O2 stays within range, but it looks pretty good. If you like this video or any of the other videos, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and as usual, happy HVACing.